Hello YouTubers. This video is a small demo on how to configure alarm view and discrete alarms. Please do not forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I have created demo project to simulate alarms. Alarms are based on high temperature of the motors. PLC monitors the temperature of the motors and based on readings for two types of alarms, warnings and errors. Warning is activated when motor reaches temperature of 70 degrees in Celsius. By getting a warning operator also gets a message on actions needed to be taken into account. Motor will not be stopped when warning occurs. Error is activated when motor reaches temperature of 90 degrees in Celsius. On error operator gets a different message on actions needed to be taken into account, compared to warning. If error occurs motor will be stopped to avoid further damage to the equipment. Let's have a look at the PLC program. In the data block number 6 I do store temperature values of the motors. Data block number 5 is used to store warning and error bits for operator panel. First word type tag contains warnings of temperature of 16 motors in total. Second word type tag contains errors of temperature of 16 motors in total. To reset errors all at once, a tag named ACK is created. Tag named BIS is used to visualize alarm button on comfort panel. If any warning or error occurs, then this tag will be high, and alarm button becomes visible. Function FC1 is used to create alarms and errors. Alarms does not need operator intervention, while on error operator needs to reset it. Switch to comfort panel. Add one to the project if you have no any. It is a good practice to create a separate tag tables for different type of tags. I have created two additional tag tables. One for alarms, and another one for temperature readings. Click on HMI alarms. Here you can see tab different type of alarms and settings. First tab is for discrete alarms. Second tab is for analog alarms. Third one is for controller alarms. Fourth is for system events. Fifth is used to configure alarm classes. And last one is for configuration of alarm groups. First let's configure alarm classes. Click on tab alarm classes to view it. There are four predefined classes, that cannot be edited. Those are errors, warnings, system alarms and diagnosis events. While you cannot change their names and state machine, you are free to edit display name, background color settings, logging and email address. Besides predefined classes you can create your own, fully editable. In this example I am going to work with two classes, errors and warnings. Background of incoming and outgoing errors will be read. It will signal for operator, that error needs to be acknowledged and additional measures needs to be taken. Background of the acknowledged active error will be orange. The color of warnings is yellow. This type of alarm does not need acknowledgement. It warns the operator, that there are some perturbation in the system, that needs to be investigated. 
switch to the discrete alarm tab. Here will be configured all the discrete alarms. At the moment I have only 4, but you can add more on demand. First two alarms are warnings of high temperature of the motors 1 and 2. Alarm text, is the text that will be displayed for the operator. Alarm class is warning, it means that background of these two alarms will be yellow, and they do not need to be acknowledged, or reset in the PLC. Trigger tag, motor high temperature. And trigger bits are bits number 8 and 9 of the trigger tag. It means, that motor 1 high temperature alarm is DB5 DBX 0.0, and motor 2 high temperature alarm is DB5 DBX 0.1. Other two alarms are errors. These signal over temperature of the motors. Backgrounds of them will be red and acknowledgement will be needed. Trigger tag, motor over temperature. And trigger bits are bits number 8 and 9 of the trigger tag. It means, that motor 1 over temperature alarm is DB5 DBX 2.0, and motor 2 over temperature alarm is DB5 DBX 2.1. All the alarms have info text for the operator, that will be visible by clicking the button info text, while alarm is marked in the alarm view. Let's go to the main screen. Here I have two sliders, that will help me to simulate the temperature of each motor. Button to reset errors in the PLC. And one more button to show or hide alarm view. Component alarm view is placed on the pop-up screen. Currently I have configured alarm view to show pending errors, warnings, and system alarms. In the toolbar buttons properties you can set which buttons of the alarm view will be visible. I use info text button and acknowledge. Switch back to the main screen. Let's configure alarm button. Select it and switch to animation tab. Here you can see two used animations, appearance and visibility. In appearance, color of the background of the button is configured. If there is an error, then background of the button is red, otherwise background color is gray. Visibility is used to control when the button is visible and when is not. If there is an active alarm, the button will be visible, otherwise, invisible. The main function of this button is to toggle visibility of the pop-up screen with alarm view. Switch to the events tab and select click event. As you can see, on click event I do show or hide pop-up screen that contain alarm view component. Select another button, named reset. Its purpose is to reset any active error. On the press event I do set tag error acknowledgement. It reset all active errors. On the release event I do reset that tag. Let's try application in action. Alarm button is invisible as there is no any warning or error. Let's try to generate warning of motor 1 by increasing its temperature. Alarm button became visible, as there is alarm of motor 1. Let's look at the alarm view. There is one active alarm, motor 1 high temperature. It is a warning as the background color is yellow. Also I have set the question mark as the name of warning. Let's click info text button to see if there is an information on this warning. Additional pop-up window with info text has opened. 
It gives some directives to the operator how to act in this situation. Let's try to generate alarm for motor number 2. There are two alarms now, both of the type of the warning. Let's look for the info text. Operator has got clear directives on both warnings. Let's try to generate an error for motor number 2. The background of the alarm button became red, it means that there is error. There is an error and warning. Error for motor number 2 and warning for motor number 1. As you can see, the info text of error is different compared to the text of the warning. Let's try to reduce temperature of the motor 1 to see if warning will be gone from alarm view. Now only error persist. By clicking acknowledge button its background becomes orange, but error still persists as it needs to be reset in the PLC. Let's do same with motor number 1. There are two errors now. One is acknowledged, another one is not. Both of the errors are acknowledged, let's try to reset them in the PLC. Well, they cannot be reset, because temperature is still not in operation limits. Let's reduce the temperature and try to reset again. Reset did work, and as there are no any alarms, then alarm button became invisible. That is that what I wanted to show you. If this video was useful for you, please do not forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and happy coding.